Um, I'm representing All Right Now in showing their real-time location system, more specifically the application centred around asset tagging and staff duress and staff protection. Uh, firstly, what I'd like to do is to introduce you to the range of tags that we have for the system. Um, I'll introduce you first to the asset tag. Uh, the asset tag uh, can be attached to various objects, paintings, uh, statuettes, things like that. You'll see that the form factor itself is quite small. It's easily attached. And uh, the technology, uh, based on the fact it's real-time and transmitting in real-time, allows us to be able to, to sense for various things. It can sense motion, so it knows when it's been moved. It knows also when it's been removed from a surface, using a little sensor below. And also as well, it be able to tell you if it's been illegally removed from an area or a room. So, say for instance I'm a member of the public or I'm an unauthorised member of staff and Legitimately or illegitimately, I want to be able to remove this artifact. So if I move this artifact, like so. Asset moved. You can hear in the background an alert has been raised called asset moved. Now that is because it's detected the movement of the artifact. I've not gone in behind to try and remove the asset from the artifact. It's purely given an alert because I've moved it. What I'm going to show you at this stage is what happens if somebody tries to remove the asset tag from the asset itself. So if I remove it, equipment tag tempered. Instantly, we have equipment tag tempered. Equipment tag tempered. Okay, so what we have here on the alert, equipment tag tempered. We have an an asset tag tampered. Tag tampered. We here see here in the map the location Equipment where it's happened, which is tampered. the RF zone. Equipment tag tampered. Now if I go back. Equipment tag tampered. Equipment tag tampered. I reapply the tag. Now forgive me for the use of the type of adhesive use of the tag, as you appreciate as it is a demonstration. Um, so we're just fixing the tag temporarily. The tag itself, in, in the real-time environment, would have a little metal plate. Um, just bear with me, I'll get it for you. It's have a little metal plate that itself will be fixed to the asset, either by screws or be using um, quite a strong adhesive. And the tag itself would fit into the metal frame itself. The back of the metal frame has a little window. That window is for the sensor that's in the tag to be able to detect when it's attached to the surface and when it's been removed from the surface. So basically what I've done here, I've just uh, shown you what happens in that environment. Equipment tag tempered. As you can see. Equipment tag tempered. So I fix it back to the asset. And that's just a very quick showing on what happens if somebody removes the asset tag from the asset itself. And we're able to manipulate the logic behind that for different levels of sensitivity of touch or motion depending on the environment it goes into or the type of artifact it has been applied to. So to say I am actually allowed to move this artifact, well how am I able to do this? Well the logic allows me to, to also as well as alert on illegal events on the system, I'm able to create logic around legal events on the system. And what I mean by that is to give you a scenario. This little device, it is a miniature version of an LF. It emits a very small LF field. So in this current environment, the, tag as, the tag's asset status is currently active. If I show this to the tag, it will change the status of that active tag to, if for instance, I can create a suspend time for say one minute, 15 minutes, one hour, two hours, it could be forever how long you want to in order to take the asset off the wall and in order to be able to clean it or temporarily move it away from the position and back again. And I'll just very, uh, very, very quickly go over this. So all I do is if I press this behind the asset, I would have excited the tag. And we go to the computer screen here You'll see other tags here that are currently active on the system. Because I've shown the LF to the tag behind the artifact, it's now on a one minute suspend. So based on the fact it's on a one minute suspend, I'm able to remove the artifact and nothing will happen. 
Obviously, because the spend time is the spend time is only one minute. If I'm still handling the artifact after that one minute expires, it will automatically go to the full active status for that tag, which means if I still have it in my hand and it's in motion when this spend time elapses, it will create an alarm. There's also another scenario. Just say I'm able to use or move the asset within the location, but I don't have the authority, I don't have the rights to be able to make it change location, i.e. take it out of the room that is currently situated. And to go through that scenario, I'll just demonstrate. So as previously I just showed you, I've been given this, I'm able to use it so I can create a condition where the tag goes from an active mode to suspend mode for one minute. So, as previously, I'm able to take it off the wall, there's no motion, but actually I need to take it somewhere else. So I'm going, I'm exiting the area of where the artifact is. Equipment near exit. And as you can see, the asset has been detected exiting from the location illegally because although I'm able to suspend the tag to be able to manage the asset within the area it's in, I don't have the authority to remove it from the area that it's within. The other tag I'm going to do as part of the demo today is what we call the personnel tag. Now the personnel tag comes in a naked format like this or with a front uh, card holder. The naked format allows you to use this attachment directly on whereby you have this insert to be able to put a staff ID to be worn thus so. Or alternatively we have this which allows you to combine an existing access control card or staff ID card which using this mechanism the tag plugs into the back and you have a combined unit that can be worn in this fashion as shown here or anywhere else on your person. Also on the back of the personnel tag you'll notice there are two buttons on the back so although the primary purpose will be for the management of assets, escorting, which I'll show you in a minute, we also have additional features whereby we can use this tag for staff duress or call assistance or for any form of alert cancellation. So I've just gone through the scenario whereby I'm able to suspend a tag because I'm authorised, I've been given a piece of equipment to be able to move assets from within the facility but not remove them from the facility itself. So what I've got here is a scenario whereby I'm uh, an authorised user, I could be a departmental owner or a manager, so I've got one of these tags on the system. Everyone in theory could have a tag on the system, each tag because it has a unique ID can be given different levels of logic or, or uh, privileges within the system. So me, for instance, as the manager, I might have more privileges with somebody else wearing the same type of tag. So, me having the top level privileges for this department or this area, I'm allowed to remove this artifact, not only off the wall, but also be able to take it out of the department itself. And I'll show you. So here you see a scenario whereby me, as an escort or an authorised user or owner of this asset, I've been able to remove the asset from the facility safely with no events and no alarms. And to show you the scenario, I just take off the tag, lay it down, put myself in a scenario where they've forgotten my tag or I'm not the same user, and repeat the same scenario again. Equipment near exit. So that demonstrates the live logic being used between tag and asset or owner and asset uh, rights between what you can do, what you can't do, where you can go, where you can't go and who can take it between A, B or C. I want to just go through quickly a scenario whereby you can use the tag. We've used it for having permissions to be able to manage or be able to escort assets, etc. But as I mentioned earlier, we have two fully configurable buttons on the back. And again, a button could be for a cancellation. Say, for instance, you create an alert on the system or a siren or something being created, you could use that as an authorized cancellation of that event. 
Also, and uh, probably more commonly, the buttons are also typically deployed for loan worker, staff duress, uh, or call assistance type um, applications. So if I press the button on the back of this, well, firstly what I need to do is I will walk from location. So if you remember, this LF is a location. The LF of the doorway can be a, an, a, a, an entrance into another location. So the tag will be shown to this LF. And then I'm walking, I'm passing this LF. So I'm coming out the other side, but the system will remember that this is the last location I'm at. So when I press the button, Attack on a staff member. You see here, Ben Dawes needs assistance at LF left. If I click on it, you'll see where the alert is taking place in blue, which is LF left, which is over here. And my current position is RF general, which is this location here. If I now move to another location, you can see in the map that although I called for assistance here, because of the real-time location, it's tracked me for, to this location and again to this location. So although I encountered some form of problem here, I know from the real-time location I need to get someone to here. Other tags we have, this tag here, it's a larger tag, it's designed to be so. It's designed for rugged environments, for security guards, protection staff, correctional facilities. This tag has got various functions. It has man down, so you can detect when someone has uh, fallen down for whatever reason. It has confirmed alarm with two button presses, one each side, and also it has a ripcord facility as well. So in harsh environments or in high risk areas, these are very good for personnel involved in the security or correctional facilities areas. I uh, just want to go through uh, quite an important feature of these types of systems. Obviously safety and security is paramount and what makes a safety and security system uh, worth what it is, is the audit capabilities of the system. You want to be able to go back and be able to call on reports uh, to do with events, times of events, locations, who's closed the events, etc. With the capability of being able to access reports using the web browser interface that All Right Now has, we're able to create conditions or report conditions here uh, from alerts, attendance, caller response. We can go down to we can grab a list of badges, a uh, list of time zones, temperatures. We can do a whole list of alert types. And as you will see, when I click execute, you'll see come up in a computer a generated report that allows to have full visibility of what has happened on the system. Okay, here we can see uh, the company all right now, the date ranging from 13th of the 9th 2012, 13th 9th 2012, so we're only doing today's events. And here we have the columns, date and time, source, alert name, description, close time and close by. So this actual report I've generated is done by location. So here we have by location LF left, we have all of the alerts that have been generated under that location. So you can see all the dates and times. The source was the asset tag. The alert name was asset near exit. Description is the actual name of what's been generated as part of the alert, which is asset near exit. The close time of that alert and how it was closed. And this event has been auto closed. So again, you're able to set up on the system for an alert to auto close. You can see further down that actually it was being closed by a user on the system which has the supervisor profile. If we go further down here we can see other locations, LF right, and you can see for instance uh, Irene Lamb, Ben Dawes, uh, these are all sort of tests we were doing to create all the events on the system for us to be able to show you today. And also again Brent Ben Dawes, button press, Ben Dawes needs assistance, at LF right and the supervisor close the event. Now, as I said, real time location is given by the fact that the tags themselves are transmitting in real time. A tag based on uh, three states. Uh, one state will be motionless, in which it will be transmitting once every 60 seconds, in motion, once every 10 seconds, 
and when it goes near an exit, it goes into what we call an excite mode, where an explicit fast transmissions happen to the system, so the system knows it needs to react to a predefined event or logic that needs to happen as a, as a result of the tag being in the field. So we'll see close up here, we'll start from this side. Here we have at the doorway, and uh, we have the doorway we call an LF exciter. Now the LF exciter um, can be visible, it uh, can be made invisible by putting it behind a, 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 an enclosure. And basically what that does is it emits an electromagnetic field around the doorway um, anywhere between 0 to 3 metres to 5 metres, depending on the range and the type of area that you want to have the electromagnetic field protecting. Here we have the RF receiver that also doubles up as our controller. Uh, now I'm not going to go into too much technical detail, but the controller gives us the functionality to be able to ha handle uh, system-led capabilities purely from the controller or use the controller in backup to the main server itself. We have these options depending on the type of environment it's going into. Here we have also the display panel. So again, in addition to the main client stations, we can also have a separate display panel that can allow you to close out alarms and be able to see events that are currently open on the system. Here we have is two screens. Uh, one screen we have uh, purely for uh, showing alerts on the system and here we have on the right, which is actually the middle screen, we have an, uh, actually a, a map that can show the real-time location of an asset or a person within the system. Now, actually what I've done here, I've highlighted uh, one tag named Ben Dawes, which is uh, this holder here. Now currently, Ben is being located um, at the RF coverage. So this is basically the generic RF zone which the tag is being seen. However, if the tag moves to another location, you can see that the tag has moved from the RF location to the LF location at the door. And I can show you again, moving to another location, which is another LF which I've assembled down here. As you can see on the map, it's relocated. So when I put the tag back into the central area, which is the RF source on its own, you'll be able to see the tag eventually relocate back to the area that is being seen. And there it is, it's just moved back. You're able to relate location events to third-party systems, and what I mean by that is CCTV. So for instance, if I go and move an asset, or I go to illegally go outside of an exit, by creating an emotion event, or a tamper event, or a near exit event, those explicit events, can we can tell the system to trigger a specific CCTV camera into real time uh, action. So therefore, in theory, even though you may not have a fully manned security uh, control room, the CCTV system is automatically going into real time record of that event. It may be a false alarm, it may not, but at least you have visual evidence that has taken place. That's really it for now. Um, I hope I've uh, gone through the features you were hoping to see today. I'm sure Ian will be on hand to facilitate any questions you have. And uh, that's it for me. Thank you very much.